Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with AEW Dark Review for the uh, 11th of um, October 2021. Uh, shorter show this time, this is good. Um, matches that don't need to be here, this is not good. And, um, you know, I mean, ultimately these, these shows to show the depth and also desperation of AEW as a brand to have some of these people on staff. Anyway, Penelope Ford with the bunny defeats uh, Noxus uh, Mimi. This is Mimi's debut. Ford 15 and Ford dominates and wins by submission with the uh, Moloch. And I mean, I Penelope Ford, nice to look at. Penelope Ford probably works hard, but absolutely no reason she should be on a national promotion um ortiz and santana defeats adrian uh serrano and gabriel hotter um i, I think it, there's a waste of santana and ortiz i've never been a big fan of theirs but them being on this show is just kind of stupid uh this is the Debut for the Enhancement Talents, Short and Ortiz and Santana, 11-3 and three win with a face crusher. Why even have them get ready for something like this? Uh, FTR with Wardlow defeat Lee uh, Moriarty and LSG. FTR, FTR has a new um, entrance theme, kind of like Midnight Express from back in the day. Uh, Moriarty's first match with the promotion under his contract. And is a good run for him. Uh, FTR uses the tag team uh, skills to remain on top. And then LSG has cash in a small package. But Paul Turner uh, distracted by Dax Harwood. So couldn't get the win. FTR 23-3. and three. Think about that. They've had them over co on contract for over a year. And they've got 26 matches under their, under their belt. Hit with a brain buster. Um, probably the, the greatest thing we'll see on the, on the night, but anyway. Um, then we move to Ty Conti with Anna Jay defeating Danny Moe. Uh, matches Moe's first debut, and she gets basically killed off by Conti's offense. Conti is 34-5, and five, wins the match with the DDT. Then, where I got really insulted, Joey Janela with Kayla Rossi defeats Crowbar with the Blue Meanie. Um, a guy, an ECW legend, a guy who's actually been to a national company and stayed for a while losing a match to Joey Genoa. On what planet is this a good idea? Uh, match is uh, obviously AEW debut for Crowbar. Uh, Genoa cuts a promo calling the fans idiots and called uh, Ben Simmons the smartest man in Philadelphia for wanting to leave the area. Janela tries to leave, but Mimi shows up and forces Janela to return. Uh, there's an ECW chant. Rossi interferes on behalf of Janela and even lands a Rana on Crowbar. Janela wins, hitting the Death Valley driver. And after the match, Sonny Kiss runs out to attack his old partner. Rossi intervenes and hits a Phoenix Splash on Kiss. Poor Sonny Kiss. They had so much potential with that, but they didn't do anything with it. And then Crowbar losing to Janela on what planet is that appropriate? Uh, later in the show, Meanie and Crowbar had a backstage segment talking about the return to major promotion and putting over All Elite Wrestling. Ruby Soho defeating Emi Sakura with Lulu Pencil. Uh, Emi works heel even more so than previous matches. Lulu interferes throughout the match, but doesn't work out. Uh, match is fine. Soho wins after hitting a mule kick and counter to Sakura trying to lock her up with the move. Sakura's first loss in AEW singles competition. She moves since moving to the U.S. And um, Soho has a record of 3-1 and one now. Private Party and the Butcher and the Blade with Matt Hardy and the Bunny defeats Chuck Taylor, Wheeler Yuta, Rock Anderson, and Lee Johnson with Chris Statlander. Why? Why do we need an eight-man match? Why? Why is this Hardy family office thing even a thing? Why? Why are we wasting a guy like Bro uh, Brock Anderson, who admittedly is in his rookie year, so shouldn't be pushed heavily, but should be protected as something for being second generation? Why? Why is Chuck Taylor and Wheeler Yuta associated with a guy 
with guys with potential like Anderson and Johnson. I just know um, lots of spots. Uh, everybody kind of gets their spots in. Private Party, Yuta, and Johnson. Um, they everybody loves the the multi man matches. I'm just not in that crew. I think it's I think it screams we want to be Japan, but we're not, and it it comes off horribly. Johnson's in there alone with Private Party. Johnson uh, gets Mark Quinn out of there and hits Isaiah Cassidy in the Fireman's Carry. Cassidy then manages to escape. Butcher levels in with a lariat, pin, and win, and we are done. We'll be back with the Raw, Raw Review. We'll also be back with more of the uh, Mid-Atlantic Review, probably finishing out 1982 tonight. We'll be back with more right after this.